If you're looking for a generic formula for how far apart your light should be, you're in trouble. Stay tuned. I got answers. A grid, you say? Symmetry? I've got to have it? People crave symmetry. It gives them a sense of control, a sense of order. You know what to expect. This is on this side. It's also on that side. Asymmetry makes us feel out of control. Have you ever noticed every scary movie house is asymmetrical? There's a reason for that. It's out of balance. It makes us feel lost. We love symmetry. It gives us a sense of balance and control. But newsflash is, we ain't got none. You have no control. Your ears are not the same height. Your eyes are different sizes, unless you've had some help. When we try to force it on our house, we lose out on good layouts. It will hold you back in planning a lighting layout that works just for you. And that's what we want to do. You want it custom for your house. What should you do? Well, how the hell should I know? I'm not in your house. I mean, things are different in every one spot. Even if you have a cookie cutter designed community where all the houses are the same, your needs are going to be different. The way you work in your kitchen will be different. The way you use rooms in your house will be different. So your lighting plan should be different. Get it? As much as you plan, the plumber's going to come in and throw a pipe there, or the electrician's going to run wires, or there's going to be ductwork that's going to make you have to make adjustments to where lights are located. Embrace the asymmetry. Symmetry is kind of like Eleven's classroom. Orderly, uniform, communism. Asymmetrical lighting is kind of like capitalism. Feeling good, Lewis! When you work harder, you need more light, you get more light in that area. When you don't work so hard, you don't need so much light. Asymmetry is going to give you light in the right places so that you can make it out of that scary house because the hallway will be lit where the door is instead of straight down the line because it made it easier for the electrician. So when you go in these houses and you see a perfectly laid out grid above a beautiful new kitchen, of course it looks well lit and nice. It's bright, it's blasted out, but is it accentuating? that beautiful countertop that you agonized about, or those glass cabinets. Is it highlighting it just in the right spot? Think about your plan and where you need lights and then put them there. There are formulas galore. Divide the room ceiling height in half. That's how far apart they should be. Measure three feet out, 30 inches out from the edges of the walls, light the corners. It's all nonsense. You need to look at each one of your spaces as an individual spot where you might do things differently than the lady next door and put your lights where you need them. Contractors, electricians in particular, are really fond of the grid. And there's a reason for that. The lights run straight down one bay. It's not complicated. That's not what we're aiming for. We're aiming for a good design, a well-lit home. A grid makes their life simple. Straight down a line, straight down a line, in the bays, in between the joists. Now, it might make sense in a hallway where you want them to be uniform, where OCD may kick in, and if they were off by just a little bit, you would see it. Yes, there, straight lines, great. But in your kitchen, in your living room, these are places where there's going to be different tasks done, different activities going on. A grid, a uniform, here's Eleven's classroom, here's communism, and everyone gets the same shit, does not work. We want asymmetry. We want capitalism. We want if you work harder, you get a better light. So here's how you do it. First up, gather all of your plans, your architectural plans, your kitchen plans, your bathroom vanity plans. Go get your plans. Any of the stuff that's going to be permanently attached to the walls. That way we know where to put lights and not interfere with them. And while you're thinking of that, Think of your ceiling obstruction. So if you have beams, a coffered ceiling, sprinklers, other light fixtures going on in there, you want to account for that too. While you're thinking about your ceiling, remember how tall it is because an 8-foot ceiling and a 12-foot ceiling are going to need different demands, different specifications from those lights in order to get the same quality light. When you have high ceilings, you got to spend the money in order to get good quality light down low. It's the price you pay for all that volume. Now you may not want to commit to how your furniture is going to be laid out, but you need to have a general idea. If the sofa is going to be over here, do I need a reading light? A general 
idea of where furniture might go is going to give you a better idea of where to put lights. When you've got the furniture and the plan in place, think about how traffic is going to move through the space. And by traffic, I mean you and your family, the dog, company, how you're going to work, cook, do laundry in the space, how you move through and need light. Also think about where the surfaces are that you're going to do tasks that need a good amount of light versus not a lot of light. So the kitchen countertop versus the coffee table. They're going to have different demands for light. So make note of that on your plans. Now you've got all of your stuff in place, your plans, your furniture, your way of living in this house. Now you've got to figure out what kind of lights are going to suit that. So what kind of recess lights are going to use? What kind of lumens are they going to put out? What kind of beam spread are they going to have? What quality of light or CRI index do they register on? And you want that to be somewhere 85 or better, unless it's some crappy accent light. You want good quality light to show off the colors and the finishes that you picked in everything else. If you don't have it, it's going to change the quality of those beautiful finishes. Check the specifications. It's really important you know how many lumens that's going to put out. What's the color temperature? What's the beam spread on that? You need less lights when you have a wider beam spread. You also get less quality light because the light is sort of diffused out. So you want to be mindful of what you're getting and then you'll know how many you need. You can't possibly know how many lights you're going to need until you know the specifications of the light that you're going to get. It makes sense, doesn't it? When you're placing these recessed lights, they may not all be the same type of recessed light. So some of them might be a down light. Some of them might have a gimbal so it adjusts and hits artwork or cabinetry or whatever you might want to highlight. Make sure you know where the beam is actually going to hit so that you're covered in those areas where you need light. Speaking of needing light, how are you going to turn them on? Which ones are going to turn on at the same time? You want to check how the lights are switched. So are all the corners of the room going to turn on? Is the center fixture going to turn on? Do I want the sink light to turn on separately than the rest of the lights in the kitchen? How are your lights going to be switched and where are those switches? Are they convenient when I walk in the room, when I walk out of the room? If there's two or three ways in and out of the room, you want to have those covered. Is there a switch near tasks that I can flip on? Under the counter, for under counter lights. Think about how the lights are going to be switched, how they're going to be controlled around the house. Most important in all of this is to think about the other fixtures that you're going to use in the rooms where the recessed lighting is. If you're using no other lighting, shame on you. You'll be in shadows. It'll be awful. Never, ever use just one source, one type, one never. Just don't do it. It's not good. It's, it's awful. Don't do it. There will be other lights besides the recessed lights in a room. Pay attention to those fixtures, their lumens, what kind of light they're going to cast around the room and adjust the recessed lights accordingly. We want to light our space as well and recessed lights help us do that but they are an addition. They are not the be all to end all. They are not your only source of light. And if they are, your lighting plan will suffer. And we don't want that to happen. There's enough bad lighting out there. I snoop at night, million dollar houses with lines of grids running right down their kitchen. Don't be like them. Be smart. Move your lights in, hit the countertop not the top of your head. Once you have your plans, you know where the furniture is going, you know what kind of bulbs you're going to use, you know what kind of fixtures you're going to use, and you know what other kinds of light are going on in the room, how the traffic's going to work, then you sit down and you do your plan. So if you want to see how that's done, tune in, subscribe, watch the next one. See you there. When I say it like that, it makes sense, doesn't it?